Hello and welcome to episode 105 of Photo Kitchen. I'm your humble host, MD Welch, and today we're talking about tool bags, also sometimes called grip bags. Uh, I do want to say that I am not a grip, I'm not a gaffer. Uh, I, I want to apologize to all the best boy, best girl, best people uh, uh, grips out there. I'm not in no way, shape, or form trying to steal your thunder or be an imposter on that. But I do hear a lot of people refer to these tool bags for photographers and filmmakers as grip bags. So I'm going to use that term, but in no way or shape or form am I trying to pretend to be a grip or a gaffer. Now, this is something that every photographer, every filmmaker, uh, especially beginning in their career, should start to build out. And everybody's bag is different. Everybody's tool belt is different. What they carry with them on a shoot. A lot of times it's just based upon years of knowledge and working uh, and uh, just needs on set. Uh, but there are some items that everybody should have in their bag or on their belt. Uh, and we'll talk about those first. And then we'll talk about some additional add-ons later. The first thing that I think everybody needs to have in their bag is a pair of clean gloves. Now, I like these by the Mechanics line. They're leather palm. They're nice. They feel comfortable. They don't get super hot in the summer. They keep my hands kind of warm when temperatures get cool. I do like the leather palms because while I'm not handling a lot of hot lights anymore, I still have a few tungsten lights that can get really hot. I don't want to have to worry about burning my hands. This is a great way to protect them. Also, it has these nice uh, rubber protectors on the knuckles and the top of the uh, or the back of the hand here. Uh, I have reached in many times pulling out a stand, maybe out of a bag or something, other stands roll over. And uh, fortunately, I've never had my hand really damaged because I'm always wearing gloves. Uh, and these are dedicated. No working on your car with them, no pulling weeds with them. Get yourself a clean pair of gloves uh, and keep them that way because you don't want to track oil or dirt or whatever onto your set or your gear by using dirty gloves. Uh, the next couple of items here that are really important, uh, I'll dive inside the bag in a second. By the way, I have this nice carabiner that keeps the two handles here closed uh, and also good for hanging stuff up. And by the way, to the bag itself, this is just one of those wide mouth uh, bags uh, of Husky in this particular case. What drew me to this bag is that it's bright red. Uh, so I could say to somebody on set, go grab the red tool bag. They know exactly what I'm referring to. Uh, we'll open it up in a second, but two things that I think every photographer filmmaker needs to have sooner than later are ways to cut stuff. A pair of scissors, uh, almost key. Great for, by the way, cutting backdrops, but also cutting tags off of wardrobe, anything like that, loose threads. Uh, these are great. Knives are fine, but uh, scissors are a little bit better. So I have a nice pair of scissors here. I also have the aforementioned or the uh, always present box cutter or knife here. Now, one thing I will say about um, this, opposed to say like a Leatherman or something like that, like a multi-tool, is if I am going into a place where they don't allow this type of stuff, and it does happen, I've actually shot inside of an airport and they wouldn't let me through, even though that I wasn't boarding a plane, I had this through TSA. They wouldn't let me carry it. So these have removable blades. Take the blade, put it in a garbage can. You don't have to get your particular uh, thing or your multi-tool taken away from you because now you've not only lost your knife, but everything else that you might actually have in the setup. So this is a nice feature. And by the way, buy a bunch of blades for these things and change them out often. Uh, cutting seamless is actually one of the easiest ways to dull a blade. So uh, change out your blades. So the next item here, I'm going to dive into the bag really quick and grab it. Uh, gaffer's tape. Everybody needs gaffer's tape. Black gaffer's tape should be the first roll that you buy. I'm due for a new roll here. Uh, they, it comes in all sorts of widths, all sorts of colors. There's also papers tape out there and spiking tape. So do make sure that you're buying the right tape for the job. Uh, I could do a whole video and should uh, on uh, just nothing but tape. And if that's something that you would like, let me know down in the comments section below. So uh, gaffer's tape, another must. So gloves, uh, something to cut stuff with, gaffer's tape, um, big, big musts. Um, other stuff, going back to the outside uh, that are musts, pens. I have all sorts of Sharpie pens. I have two regular black Sharpies here. Uh, some metallic ones are also good too as well. Sometimes you want to mark something and it's black and you only have black Sharpies. That's a great way to do it. The metallic ones, I need to uh, refill that. These two Sharpies mark anywhere. They're wide chisel tip um, Sharpies uh, and they will mark on wood. They will do all that kind of stuff. Uh, being able to mark things, I mean, something as benign as marking water bottles on a set can be a huge help. So pens, I don't have any ballpoint pens in here. Maybe I should. Um, if you do, let me know in the comments section below. On the other side here, some stuff that's a little bit more specialized. I have a torpedo level. I have a slider. I work with dollies a lot. 
they need to be leveled out. Torpedo level's key. You also use it for like a backdrop or something like that. Uh, every now and then I need a measuring tape, which is stuck in here because it's been a while. Uh, so this is just your standard measuring tape. It's a 30 foot. I will measure out lights. I will measure out lighting locations. If I know I got to replicate a lighting uh, setup later on, I will go ahead and uh, mark those out. Note F stops, those kinds of things. Also when scouting location, this is great to have. Do you have enough room for your 10 foot wide seamless? Uh, do you have enough room to run your 10 foot long dolly track? Uh, don't guess, use a measuring tape. It's a great way to make sure that you're right. Uh, what else do I have on here? Um, I, I have these detailing brushes. I got a set of these and I've put them on here. I haven't used them yet, but just in case I need to brush off a lens, brush off a camera body before I change things out, I thought this might be kind of a cool idea. Um, so they're kind of sticking around in the bag. Um, to actual tools themselves, I have a pair of slip jaw pliers here. These are old pair of Craftsman Robo Grip. Uh, but back in the day when Craftsman made everything in the good old US of A, uh, these are great for uh, loosening up uh, thumb nut, uh, thumb screws, not thumb nuts, thumb screws on uh, lights, um, any sort of thing like that, any of those tiny little uh, knobs, especially if it's cold. This is great. I use this probably more than anything in my bag, uh, especially when it's cold. To loosen things up. Uh, nothing in that one. The only problem with these pouches is sometimes things can hide. Uh, in this pouch, buried down, is the world's smallest but cutest screwdriver. This came with my uh, Ring camera uh, doorbell system. I like it because it's Phillips and flathead, uh, but I also like it because it's a bright orange handle. So it's easy to find. It's easy to see on set. That's nice. I have two sets of Allen keys, one in one pouch, one in the other. I'll put one out here. Uh, metric and standard tripod plates, those kinds of things. Yes, you get all those little Allen keys when you buy those things, but they're loose. They fall all over the place. Get yourself a de dedicated pair of keys. It will help you out in the long run. To the actual bag itself, uh, let's get some of these items out of here. Clamps, A clamps. Uh, go to a hardware store, pick these up. These are uh, just worth your weight in gold. These are two inch uh, clamps here. Uh, the inch size is basically how wide the opening is. So that's what it's referring to. It's not actually referring to the width of anything. So that's the opening. So I have several two inches. Two inch clamps are great for securing backdrops uh, onto lighting poles. They're great for securing fabric. If you're doing like green screen work, you want to remove those folds or you want to take out folds and fabric, you could go ahead and widen it out and then clip to the side of your backdrop stand. So I have a handful of those in here. Uh, and I do have a handful of those. You can see that I have a fair amount of them and I use every single one of them in here. I have a few, although um, I don't use them as much, but I'm starting to use them a little bit more. I have uh, one inch clamps here. They're nice. I don't think that I have, oh yeah, I do have just a few in here and I should probably actually put these in a smaller bag so they're easier to find. So I have a few of these small mini uh, little pony clamps here or A clamps. Uh, these are great for securing wardrobe. If you have something, maybe you have a model wearing an outfit, a suit, uh, a dress or something like that, and it's a little bit loose, you could go ahead and bunch up the fabric in the back and clip these. Uh, they are really small. I need to get some more. Also, C47s, clothespins here. I only have a handful now. I need to buy another uh, large bag. I think it come in quantity of like 20 or 50. Uh, other things that I have, I have different types of ties. These are bongo ties, uh, just great for securing cables two things. I have them in here. Don't use them as much as I thought I was going to, but there you go. Um, I also have an outlet tester. I've used this quite a bit. Uh, great for scouting locations. If you are about to leave the house and you're going to a location and you need to run power, this little item, and I forget what they cost, but it's next to nothing, uh, will save you because you could go scout a location, especially if it's an older home. Uh, maybe it's new construction. Um, I've done a lot of work in casinos in my career. A lot of times the floor plates where they run electrical, they've disconnected those lines and you're depending on that. So you don't have to run a hundred feet of extension cable. This will save your butt. This and measuring tape on a location scout, absolute key. Uh, so that's good there. Uh, the rest of the bag is really dedicated to gaffer's tape. You should have several different colors if you can. This is a really old piece of red tape. It's almost given up the ghost here. Probably should just chuck that, to be honest with you. Um, I Tape comes in wider sizes. This is a nice wide roll of white tape here. This is really good for either marking things or uh, because you gaff tape's great, you could just tear it up and uh, make it into smaller pieces. But it's also great if you're doing white seamless, you need to secure the seamless to the floor. Uh, it's nice wide. It makes it placement really easy. I use um, these one-inch tapes here. 
to mark on floors, although they do have strike tape or marking tape that is a cloth based, not a cloth based tape, but a fabric based tape, paper tape. There we go. As a paper tape, uh, that's a little bit easier. You got to be careful. Sometimes certain tapes leave more residue. Like for example, gaffer's tape on piping, metal stuff works out okay. Paper tape does not. It will leave a lot of residue. Um, they even have specialty gaffer's tape. This is one of my favorite things I've ever found. This is a super wide roll of gaff tape, and it might be hard to see on camera, but there's these just these little pieces of adhesive on either side. So almost the width of my finger, and then you have this clear channel of nothing in here that uh, has no adhesive. This is what you're taping cables down with, right? Um, it, I, I've gone through several rolls of this, but I've never had anybody trip over cables. So it's great. It is pretty pricey though. Uh, something else that I picked up recently is caution tape. They sell these at Home Depot at Lowe's. Get yourself a roll of caution tape. If you want to prevent somebody from walking on set or something like that, it's great. It's also great as a prop. If you need to use something as a prop, there you go. You have it. And uh, that pretty much concludes, I have just a few loose uh, bongo ties in here. That pretty much concludes uh, what's inside of my tool bag. What's missing here? The aforementioned probably a flashlight would be good, although I have flashlights just about everywhere. A uh, dedicated flashlight would be good. A little bit of a larger screwdriver set might be good. I don't carry any uh, professional electri electric tools or anything like that. I'm not doing electrical work where I'm a professional electrician on set. So I don't need that at the particular moment. I do need to replenish some of my gaff tape, as you could clearly see here. Um, but I think that this is a pretty good round look at what a lot of photographers, a lot of filmmakers kind of have a bit of. Sometimes they'll separate stuff and, um, you know, tie stuff, clamps, then maybe put those in dedicated things. Again, a lot of times you'll see gaffer's tape just on a, a, a rope or a string, but I like to kind of consolidate everything. I don't have that much gear. And again, fits into this nice little wide mouth. And they do make these... Uh, uh, bags in bigger form. So if you need a little bit more room, you think you're going to hold more stuff, buy a bigger one at first. Again, I would get something that's bright and colorful so you could find it on set, especially if you're working with assistants. But um, that is, that is, that's my bag. That's my tools. So um, I hopefully you like this video. If so, please hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of content posted already uh, and more coming on the way. We would love your support there. Also, speaking of support, if you could share these videos with your friends or put them on social media. That would be absolutely huge. Greatly appreciated. So until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from Photo Kitchen.